teaching through problem solving is widespread in Japan, where students solve problems before a solution method or procedure is taught. In contrast, learners in America spend most of their time doing exercises, completing problems for which a solution method has already been taught. How about in the Philippines? But what is teaching mathematics through problem solving? In teaching through problem solving or TTP, learners learn new mathematics by solving problems. Learners struggle with a novel problem, present and discuss solution strategies, and together build the next concept or procedure in the mathematics curriculum. Students learn mathematics through real context, problems, situations, and models. The context and models allow students to build meaning for the concepts so that they can move to abstract concepts. Most, if not all, important mathematics concepts and procedures can best be taught through problem solving. Kathy Seeley refers to teaching through problem solving as upside-down teaching, which is the opposite of a gradual release of responsibility model or what we know as explicit teaching. An I, we, you model characterizes a type of teaching called gradual release of responsibility. While gradual release of responsibility may be a research-based method of teaching some skills in certain content areas, notably in reading, this model has not been shown to be an effective way to allow students to productively struggle with important mathematical ideas or unfamiliar problems. Turning an eye, we, you model of teaching upside down, we can instead adapt a you, we, I model. You, learners, are going to mess around with a problem, investigate and examine it. While in we, learners and the teacher are going to discuss what have tried, what learners found, what worked, what did not, and why learners think certain approaches might be productive or not. Lastly, in I, the teacher will going to help learners connect to mathematical ideas and procedures and make sure learners learn the intended mathematical outcomes of the lesson. Instead of starting with experiences where students accumulate knowledge, through writing out definitions, taking a note, or direct instruction, an upside-down approach aims to start with student ideas. This way, we would know that learners are actively engaged in the process of learning. This time, let's define a problem. A mathematical problem is a situation that requires a solution. It can be a routine or non-routine. If we say routine problem, it is a translation problem for which you can write an equation. While a non-routine problem is one that requires a resolution and for which no path to the answer is readily known. In addition, a problem is any task or activity for the students have no prescribed or memorized rules or methods, nor is there a perception by students that there is a specific correct solution method. This time, let's describe a problem for learning mathematics. Number one, it must begin where the students are. The design or selection of the task must take into consideration the student's current understanding. They should have the appropriate ideas to engage and solve the problem and yet still find it challenging and interesting. 
Second, the problematic or engaging aspect of the problem must be due to mathematics that the students are to learn. In solving the problem or doing the activity, learners should be concerned primarily with making sense of mathematics and thereby developing their understanding of those ideas and concepts. And third, it must require justifications and explanations for answers and methods. Learners should understand that the responsibility for determining if answers are correct and why they are correct rests within themselves and not with the teacher. Justification should be an integral part of doing mathematics. It is important to understand that mathematics is to be taught through problem solving, as that is, problem-based tasks or activities are the vehicle by which the desired curriculum is developed. The learning is an outcome of the problem-solving process. Why teaching through problem solving? Teaching through problem solving focuses students' attention on ideas and sense making. When solving problems, students are necessarily reflecting on the concepts natural in the problems. Emerging concepts are more likely to be integrated with existing ones, thereby improving understanding. By contrast, no matter how skillfully a teacher provides explanations and directions, learners will attend to the directions, but rarely to the concepts and connections. Second, teaching through problem solving develops students' confidence that they can do mathematics and that mathematics makes sense. Every time teacher poses a problem-based task and expect a solution, they say to students, I believe you can do this. Every time the class solves a problem and students develop their understanding, confidence and self-worth are enhanced. TTP provides a context to help students build meaning for the concept. Providing a context, especially when the context is grounded in an experience familiar to students, supports the development of mathematics concepts. A spiral math curriculum provides learners access to mathematics, allowing them to successfully learn the content. TTP allows an entry point for a wide range of students. Good problem tasks have multiple paths to the solution. Each student gets to make sense of the task using his or her own ideas. Teaching through problem solving provides ongoing assessment data, useful for making instructional decisions, helping students succeed, and informing parents. As students discuss ideas, draw pictures, or use manipulatives, they find their solutions and evaluate those of others and write reports or explanations, they provide the teacher with a steady stream of valuable information. Number 6. Teaching through problem solving allows for extension and elaboration. Extensions and what-if questions can motivate advanced learners or quick finishers, resulting in increased learning and enthusiasm for doing mathematics. Such problems can be configured to meet the needs of a range of learners. And number seven, teaching through problem solving engages students so that there are fewer discipline problems. Many discipline issues in a classroom are the result of students becoming bored, not understanding the teacher directions, or simply finding little relevance in the task. Number eight, TTP develops mathematical power. 
Students solving problems in class will be engaged in all five of the processes of doing mathematics, which are problem solving and critical thinking, reasoning, communications, connections, and representations. And the last but not the least, it is a lot of fun. Teachers who teach through problem solving never return to a teach by telling mode or lecture method. The excitement of students developing understanding through their own reasoning is worth all the effort. Teaching through problem solving encourages students to try and solve a problem independently rather than relying on the format of lectures and walkthroughs provided in the classroom. Teaching mathematics through problem solving gives educators and teachers the tools to restructure the lesson and curriculum design to make creative and adaptive problem solving the main way students learn new procedures. Teaching through problem solving has three phases, before, during, and after phases. And these are the activities that should be considered by teachers in the before phase. Number one, activate prior knowledge. Activate specific prior knowledge of learners related to today's concept. Number two, be sure the problem is understood by the learners. Always make sure that learners understand the problem before setting them to work. As teacher, analyze it first to anticipate students' approaches and possible misconceptions and misinterpretations. And number three, establish clear expectations. How learners are to work and what products they are going to prepare for the discussion. Let go is the first thing to be considered by teachers in the during phase. Doing mathematics takes time and solutions are not always obvious. It is important to communicate to learners that spending time on tasks, trying different approaches, and consulting each other are important to learning and understanding mathematics. Second is to listen actively. You are trying to understand a learner's approach to a problem. Your question as a teacher must probe your learner's approach to a problem. And number three, provide appropriate hints. You might suggest to the learners to use manipulative, draw a picture, or make a table if one of these ideas seems appropriate. And lastly, provide worthwhile extensions. Early finishers can often be challenged in some manner connected to the problem, just solved without it seeming like extra work. And in the after phase, promote a mathematical community of learners. Include all learners, engage the class in productive discussion, helping learners work together as a community of learners is your number one rule. Number two is to listen actively without evaluation. Take this second major opportunity to find out how learners are thinking, how they are approaching the problem. Evaluating methods and solutions is the duty of your learners. And lastly, summarize main ideas and identify future problems to explore. You can lay the groundwork for future activities as a natural part of this phase. So, at the end of the day, at the end of your lessons, you as a teacher and learners can say that mathematics really makes sense. Most of you are familiar with Polya's four-step problem-solving process. But allow me to revisit this again. George Polya, a famous mathematician, wrote a classic book, How to Solve It, in 1945, that outlined four steps of doing mathematics. Teaching these four steps to learners can improve their ability to solve problems. What are these four steps? Number one, understanding the problem. 
briefly, this means figuring out what the problem is all about, identifying what question or problem is being posed. Number two is devising a plan. You are thinking about how to solve the problem. Will you want to write an equation? Will you want to model the problem with manipulative? Or are you going to list all the possible answers? And number three, carrying out the plan. This is the implementing and checking each part of your plan. And lastly, looking back, the most important as well as most kept by learners. It answers the question, does your answer make sense? As you teach through problem solving, using these steps to help guide your learners will foster success. Once you pose a problem to learners, your first step is to be sure they understand it, which is the first step of Polly's process. You may also ask learners for ideas on which strategies might work for this problem to get some ideas started for step 2. In during phase of the lesson, learners are developed advising and carrying out a strategy they have selected and that is step two and step three then they look back to see if their solution makes sense which is the step four the after phase of the lesson is a time where students share their strategy that is the step two how they solve it the step three and how they know it is correct which is that step four the beauty of Polya's framework is generality. It can be applied to many different types of problems, from simple computational exercises to difficult multi-step word problems. Math teachers find their subject easy to teach, but difficult to learn. In the present context, teaching and learning math is tough and truly challenging. There will be uncertainties, anxieties, and fears. Misconceptions may arise, and hatred for the subject or the teacher may happen. Math teachers might fail in developing the students towards the twin goal of the K-12 critical thinking and problem solving.